presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Alan Homosasa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Uh, isn't it wonderful? This gentleman here with the gold report, right before the market fell apart, ended up with PAAS. We had a 98% gain in a year. And, uh, I mean, you weren't 99% proof like Irish whiskey, but we had a good gain there. You always told us to do what we feel comfortable with. And if I lose a little bit of money on the table, I will, but I know that I just pocketed eight or $9,000 in two weeks. That's a beautiful thing, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien today. He will be back tomorrow. Let's take a look at everything. We are up modestly today. Yes, trading about 0.64%. Russell Futures trading at about 0.69%. NQ about 0.76%. YM trading at 0.68% as well. The gold contract staying pretty solid here at 1984. Uh, we had that big run up last week and earlier this month. It was pretty. Fantastic uh, for gold. Silver at 2310. Uh, Copper futures at 363. This metal has been having a hard time recently, and we'll talk just a little bit about that. I do think on the long term, we'll see some movement in it. Um, but as it stands now, currently, I think in the short term, and really in the next few years, it's still going to be kind of a struggling metal here. Uh, we have the light Swede crude futures trading at about uh, 83.64, down about 2.16% today. Everything that's going on uh, in Gaza and Israel is putting people kind of on uh, edge with that. Then, of course, we have the Brent crude that can load up, trading about uh, down 2% today. Let's take a look here. Tesla, we'll talk a little bit about them. They had a big sell-off uh, last week um, from two, about 65 all the way down to just just above 200, and we're trading at 215 right now. Steel Dynamics uh, reaching that um, kind of support zone at 101.81. We have the dollar at 106.27. That's staying pretty constant in that 106 area as well. Hoping for a breakdown below the 105 to 104, but we're not getting that. Um, so you know, on the long term, that's something to keep in mind uh, if you're in the market in general, especially with gold as well. Uh, QQQ trading at 358, Google at 139, Meta at 312. So Meta is actually being sued by a few U.S. states. Let me see if I can pull up this uh, story real quick. Essentially, some of the U.S. states are accusing Meta of basically designing an algorithm that is uh, very addictive in nature is designed to. Um, they're not doing a good enough job of keeping uh, children off of the platform. And this is causing depression, anxiety, and insomnia in children. And, you know, I will say too, I wasn't on, I don't really use social media, but I did recently create an Instagram account just so I could save some pictures on there um, that I wanted to keep uh, for the long term and just keep uh, up with some of my friends that don't live in the state. I've been on in two years and getting back on there, I mean, there's plenty of accounts on there that obviously look like they are uh, owned by children and the content uh, that they're consuming and what they're saying is insane. I mean, being like, you know, 15, some of this stuff I had never even considered. And there seems like there really is, you can look on TikTok as well, because a lot of young folk are on there as well. Um, and the mental illness is, is rampant on that. So it's pretty intense. This is dozens of U.S. states are suing meta platforms. Let me pull it up here. Uh, and it's Instagram unit accusing them of contributing to a youth mental health crisis through the addictive nature of their social media platforms. Uh, in a complaint filed in Oakland, California on Tuesday, 33 states, including California and Illinois, said that meta, which operates Facebook, has misled the public about substantial dangers of its platform and knowingly induced young children and teenagers into addictive and compulsive social media use. It's pretty intense, guys. Um, I mean, there is even, I was talking with someone, they're asking if I had a TikTok. Tiger, if 
Financial News Network is on TikTok. However, if you guys want to check that out, we also have our shorts on YouTube, but that's about where I'm going to interface with TikTok personally. Um, but there were kids developing like Tourette's tics from it. Um, and what I mean is they were, it's called Tourette's talk, right? And it's just individuals who uh, suffer from this. They're, you know, talking about kind of the nature of the disease. And uh, it saw a lot of young folks starting to, to emulate them, right? Uh, I don't think we're fully aware of the psychology of, uh, of young folk at this point. And that's gonna change, I think, in the next coming years, especially since we're so interconnected. Um, with social media and uh, so much, uh, you know, content that prior wasn't really in the, you know, public discourse is now being put on there. Um, and I think we're seeing a big effect with that. Um, you know, uh, as to how this is really going to impact Meta, um, there's always government uh, kind of looks into these guys. There's obviously a lot of citizens uh, who form groups that talk about this. Nothing ever really changes. I've spoken about it a little bit before, the kind of sketchy territory we get into um, when we have some of these older folks in Congress who, uh, you, you know, just aren't familiar with how tech works, right? And they ask these questions, which are then kind of translated in media as like ignorant questions, but in reality, a lot of them are actually pretty valid. But the problem is, is the congressmen don't really know how to respond to some of the answers um, from some of these executives. This causes a major issue. Uh, so I don't see any legislature being passed. Of course, naturally, parents uh, should be more in control about what kids look at, so on and so forth. But this is a financial channel, and so we'll get off this topic now. But I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention, that now we have 33 states uh, are suing Meta. We'll take a look. We have a lot of earnings uh, tomorrow here. We have Microsoft, we have uh, Alphabet, HSBC, Visa, and Coca-Cola. We can take a look at Coca-Cola. Um, they have done, uh, looks like they're gonna do really well. Give me just one second. KO, that's what it is. So they're up about 3.18 today. Uh, it's raised their full year revenue forecast Tuesday after a stronger than expected third quarter. Uh, now expects its organic revenue will be up about 10% to 11% for the year. Uh, that's up eight, uh, excuse me, that's up from 8% to 9% guidance, Coke announced at the end of the second quarter. Uh, they expect earnings adjusted for currency variations uh, will grow about 13 to 14%, uh, which is pretty stellar for them. Uh, the shares obviously rose about 3%. Um, you've had like a pretty stark decline um, starting in July. It said its global case volumes rose 2% for July, September period. Coffee sales saw the strongest growth as demand uh, grew in the United Kingdom and China. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar sales were up 3% on growing demand in Latin America and North America. Of course, Latin America also suffers from uh, extreme obesity crises, just like the U.S. I think Mexico is now the most overweight uh, country in the world. And so we're going to see a big movement towards... Uh, diet kind of drinks like that. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Uh, we're going to have Basil Chapman on, which is always great. He's going to give us a little guidance of uh, what's going on in the market. Folks, stay tuned. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. I believe we are with Basil Chapman. Basil, can you hear me? I certainly can hear you, Jacob. Sounding very good. Yeah, how are you doing? Was your, uh, was your trip good and all that? Uh, it was very good. Thank you. It's awesome. always good to be back home and in the office and not having any technical problems, just having <laughs> everything run smoothly. I can imagine. That's fun. Yeah. Well, Thank awesome. You. Well, Basil, what are we looking at today? So um, I'm going to start off with the dollar just for the moment. I wanted to show you, with, for, first of all, we, for subscribers, we've been long the dollar actually since 2018 all the way up, and then it came back. Our stop held, and we still hold it long. And what I've been looking at is I'm just going to use this particular uh, chart right here. This shows you, I've got the right one, yes. This shows you the daily chart of the dollar. And when this green line, which is the nine-period exponential moving averages, average, crosses over the 14 and goes green, that's very positive. And look, since the moment it, it turned up, July the 31st of this year, it was in, in the 101s, it's gone higher. It did this. I did this uh, left side, right side price time match here, and it went to that. But what I'm really looking at right now is that even with these dips, that nine period moving average this morning early when I was doing my newsletter, it the, there was a little S, and that little S shows like it did right here when it turns pink. When it turns pink, it means the nine period moving average went under the 14. And yet, as the market started, it went green and stayed green ever since. And the dollar is at 106.27, up 0.65. So I have a lot of, I give a lot of credence to this particular one indicator. I call it the indicator of last resort because it, it, it takes its time. And when it finally turns, it's usually pretty meaningful if it stays that way for about three or four bars. It doesn't matter what time frame. So in this particular context, I wanted to show you something else. In the weekly charts, INDU, in the weekly charts, and let me move this over to a weekly chart. There it is. Click. Um, the Dow has been, the nine has been pink. And so we, were sh we went short right here, August the 1st, right at the, to at the top of this recent move. And we remain short. We did have a, a three times sh um, short. We actually had a three times long position. We switched it on Friday because it looked like the market was going to make a pattern that I call the dreaded H. Uh, I'll show you right here. Go to the Dow chart. This is the daily chart on the left. 
So it was it was like that, and I thought, uh oh, this is that part where it rolls very sharply to the low to test the left side low, which would be 32,846. So we went short, held the short, and this morning we got out of the short with it. We took profits before and we took got, got it completely out. And the reason is there's a chance, especially now that we're looking at GE, these stocks that have been hammered lately having a very good session. If you're looking at triple M, which is, I mean, three M is just, everything's gone wrong. <clears throat> having a nice session today, up five. Um, a visa, the same thing, just recently had a very sharp pullback, having a good, these are all earnings uh, reports, even Raytheon, which really, I mean, look at this chart, up in the 109 area, goes all the way down to 60, and then had a good earnings report today. So the way I was looking at it, <clears throat> is if these really strong laggards start to find some kind of support and we, we're about to get Google, I, I, I have a difficult time calling these by their changed names, Facebook and Alphabet and all that. I right. like the original names. So, I mean, Google comes out and Google is holding so well. It looks to me like it could, it could, have, it could have a nice pop. Uh, Microsoft. Is a fantastic company. It just remade itself after 2000, the year 2000, when it was uh, the the leader. It became a failure. It just dropped huge, and now look at it. It's up almost near the all-time highs. So we're looking at these. If these results come out, it's going to mean that any selling pressure that we see now is starting to be alleviated by some good earnings earnings, and that I think is very important. So. Um, just to kind of refresh, I just wanted to show you the charts here. So this pattern I always look at, which is the arch formation, you can see it in the weekly chart. As I said, the nine cross negative, the nine period moving average. I respect that, but we have not yet taken out the left side low of 32,848. We did in the S&P, and it's fascinating, each time frame, look, S&P took out the left side low, having a nice bounce today. But that weekly also went to the nine period moving average. So I have a trend line here that makes it really important that the 4200 level holds this week on any any bad news. But I'm starting to think that a, a major part of the selling pressure that I've been looking at for quite some time, and as I say, uh, using uh, some one particular tool, the on-balance volume, we got that short right there at 35,679. In the August the 1st, that was the high of the Dow, most recent high, yearly high that it's made. And we also went short the SMHs two days later. <clears throat> um, and they've been coming down. And they have also seen the SMHs, the Van Eyck Semiconductor ETF, the nine period moving averages cross negative. So in sum, what we're looking at is there's been selling pressure. Some of it has been sideways because I just look at the market three ways. It's either sharply, sharply down or sharply higher, or it's sideways. So you're either using time, using price, or you're using time and price. And some of the in, some of these charts and some of the indexes have used time and price. But you can see the semiconductor, which I consider to be really important. It's the semi, the chips are like the oil of the 1900s. Mm. We need it. We need it in everything. So that's really important. And the other thing is. Um, crude oil is pulling back, but we still have a uranium stock. Um, and it seems to me if energy rotates, uh, we have a stock called uh, uranium. Yeah, there it is. UEC is the symbol. Uranium energy, we have it in the $3.60 area. It made a new recovery high today of 583. Um, and it's just saying this whole rotation through the different sectors and the different stocks. So in this particular instance, it might be that uranium is... If oil does pull back a bit, then the alter one of the alternative e energy sources, uh, uranium at this point, is acting quite well. So I'm looking at uh, the market uh, saying these are the conditions we have. The, the Dow needs to clear um, to be able to change direction. It really needs to get to the 34,100, just 1,000 points from here. But in the meantime, there's, it could quite easily bounce to the 33,000. Uh, 33,000, I'd say, uh, 400 level, and then we'll see because this pattern very often, if it holds the left side low, then becomes an H, lowercase h, that goes to a lowercase m pattern. So, uh, and even we can see in gold because the gold chart 
uh, is holding very well, off, but after a spectacular run to the upside, this week is going to be very important to see, is this kind of a one-off? And then because the Middle East, sort of, maybe it calms down just a little bit, maybe uh, gold, which is the currency of fear, starts to pull back a little bit. I'm watching this very closely because there is a relationship to Middle East, gold, and fear. So at this particular point, the gold is holding pretty well. I'm watching it very closely. Yeah, I think we'll all be watching gold very closely as well. And Basil, again, I, I love looking at the semiconductors as a barometer for everything else running. I think that's super insightful, and I've been thinking about that like just by myself anyway. Um, so thanks for turning us on to that. And guys, you can go to TFNN.com. You can uh, subscribe to Basil's new letter, newsletter, the opening call. It's great. Basil, thank you so much for joining us. We will see thank you next you very week. Much, Jake. Take care, Basil. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018, hey, we and have, barely uh, missed that mark right? again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering okay. Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also <sighs> need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den and Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. And yeah, uh, we actually have Tim Ord online. Before we get to him, just real quick, taking a look at Raytheon. And I, I actually invest in Raytheon and I, I like the company, but what had happened here, uh, I think we went over this when I filled in sometime in July, but basically a defect was found um, in, in one of their turbines, uh, their jet engine for airliners. And this really just started a steep decline uh, in Raytheon. So we'll see if these guys can get back up. I mean, this was such a sweet level to have it at, at 102. Um, but obviously, this is some immense volume to get back over that hill with. Uh, so I'll have to wait to see if they can uh, kind of, you know, pivot away from from that defect in their jet engines. Anyways, we are with 
Tim Ord today. Tim, can you hear me? I sure can. How are Thanks you doing? Me on. You doing all right? Hello. Can you hear me? Yep, yep. I'm doing fine. I, uh, I'm here. So perfect. Let's, uh, yeah, let's crack into this. I was taking a look at some of the charts on the break, and I'm I'm really looking forward uh, to hear what you have to say about these. So. All right, we we can start on chart one. Uh, we presented this in the past. It's actually one of the reasons why um, I got long when everyone kind of was buried. I think it was back in April or May. Uh, this indicator um, was as giving a bump. first. I actually tell you what it is. It's basically the middle window is the uh, BVIX, which is a VIX for the VIX and the slash VIX, which is the VIX, which is the fear index. And this indicator is kind of a leading indicator. It gives you good clues uh, what the market's going to do. It, it shows up best at around reversals in the market, both up and down. And uh, I pointed out previous times, and this chart goes back quite a ways, uh, going back to uh, mid or about 2018, and when the S and P's goes up, a lot of times this indicator starts going down, warning that a, a top is not too uh, too far off. And I may, uh, I outline those in red arrows uh, where they occurred. And right now um, we've been going down here. We're actually uh, testing the uh, what uh, late September, early October lows right now. And um, market's rallying up a little bit here. But I want to point out on the right side of the chart is a blown up of what's going on. Um, actually, uh, if you flip to page two, it kind of uh, gives you a better view of it, yeah. or chapter two, or a, a chart two, rather, on, on, on page two. Uh, it kind of shows you what happened at the last high of um, July. This uh, July, the market was going up. This indicator was going down. Now we got something the opposite. We got the market and pretty much going down, making lower lows, while this indicator uh, so far is making higher lows. So it gives you a warning, an advanced warning. It doesn't say that the bottom's in, but it does say they're approaching the bottom. Uh, so it, um, if this chart, uh, let's see what goes back to what um, March there, if you look at the March low, that blue box, uh, the market was making lower lows, this indicator went sideways, uh, then again in the, in the July July high, uh, you know, the S&Ps were going up, this was going down, so now we got back to the blue box again, we got a positive divergence, so uh, there's something developing here pretty, uh, pretty close, you know, maybe this week, maybe next week, but what I'm really looking for is on chart three. So we, we got a, 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 a divergence, a bullish divergence in the VVIX to VIX ratio, but you need really a lot. Uh, and actually, that indicator is a fear indicator. It's the reason why I kind of lean that way. Fear only happens at bottoms, or panic only happens at bottoms. Tops are a little bit more difficult. But uh, this indicator is another fear indicator, which is the 10-day arms, which is second window up from the bottom. And when this indicator gets around 0.2 or higher, you, you, you got panic in the market. And a lot of times you're approaching a low or at the low. We had that first, uh, that first low we had back in uh, late September or October. That's the shaded pink areas or the times when the, the trend is up uh, of 1.2 or higher. We had that back in uh, the September, um, early October low. And right now, I got a, a kind of a blue shaded area that says that we're, we're coming in like 0.91, which is not bullish at all. Uh, so that tells me the market's not, you know, though we're testing the previous lows here, we don't have enough panic. Panic creates energy, and we don't have enough energy to really pop off this low yet. So, but you do have a bullish divergence on the VVIX to VIX ratio, but not enough panic in the markets, according to the trend readings, to just uh, for the low to begin right now. So uh, maybe we're going a little fast here, but let's flip to chart four. Right here. Okay, uh, chart four. Uh, okay, I wrote uh, the blue lettering is, is when the, the trend reached panic levels and it 
and uh, the ticks reach panel, uh, panic levels. And I recorded all those panic levels, uh, what day they occurred there. And back at the um, late September, early October low, we had panic in the trends and ticks. I got them labeled there. Market rallied up. We didn't get go. Uh, didn't get. We didn't have enough strength, continued strength to actually go higher. So we're coming back down, retesting the lows. Well, the market was down five days in a row going into Monday. The market's down five days. This is a quantitative analysis. But if the market's down five days in a row, the market will be lower uh, within five days, 83% of the time. And that statistics dates back for about, I think it was five or ten years. Mm-hmm. I forgot how it was. But there's it quite a bit of statistics studies done on this. So even though we hit a low, we bounced up, that's not the final low. So I'm thinking we're going to go back down and test the recent low we had here on Monday, if not break it a little bit. And the bottom window is a 10-day trend. Well, the 10-day trend needs to get up to around 1.2 or higher. So I'm thinking what's going to happen here is the market's going to fall back down, uh, if, if not this week, probably next week. And it's probably going to create a lot of panic in the ticks and trend, and that's going to push the trend up to 1.2 or higher. And that will be the signal, finally, uh, to get going to the upside. You know, that's a lot of ifs, ands, or buts. But if you look at today's volume, right now we got virtually no volume going on this rally, and that's kind of a clue that right. doesn't have enough strength uh, to get going to the upside. So we're going to fall back. How much we're going to fall back, I don't know. Usually when you – you're afraid to make the, pull the trigger on a trade. It's usually the best trade you make. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I'm, I'm thinking for this week's out or late this week or early next week, we're probably going to fall back. And it's going to be all the bad news about something. You know, it's, it's, you know, we got some wars going on. could be bad news about that. I'm not sure what the trigger is going to be, but there always seems to be some sort of a news announcement at the lows. And that's when the trend really pops up. You know, me. You may see a 1.5, maybe two or three tr- uh, trend on a close, and that'll be my trigger if that happens. Uh, uh, probably end up with a buy signal, but I think we're close to a low according to the VVIX VIX ratio. But we need the the 10-day trend to pop up there to 1.2. If that happens, uh, then I'm probably back on a buy signal. Right on, yeah. Just waiting for that juice to to get back up there. Good stuff. Well, Tim, yep. uh, please stay tuned. We still have uh, some charts to go over, and we're really enjoying it. So, uh, folks, we'll be right back uh, with Tim Ward. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. 
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, are you still with us? I sure am. I'm right here. Awesome. So I think we were just looking at uh, the 10-day uh, day trend in relation to the SPY. That's chart four. So what else are we looking at today? Uh, do you have any you got any questions about the first four charts? If not, we can move on. No, yeah, I, I think that was explained very well. I'm ready to move on for it. All right, uh, let's go to chart five. Perfect. We're looking uh, at GDX here. Yes, yeah, the GDX chart, and there's this uh, GDX is kind of like a different animal compared to the S and P's. S and P's kind of work off of uh, panic and euphoria type indicators. And where GDX, uh, I mean, if you get panic in GDX, it, it can still move lower. And I never really found a good indicator to really signal a bottom as far as uh, panic indicators. So I kind of went a different direction over the years to, to figure out what works best. And what seems to work best is the uh, up-down volume advanced client type indicators. So it kind of measures the internal strength or weaknesses uh, that that GDX has. And I, this chart, uh, chart number five, only really goes back about a little over a, about a year or whatever. And the blue areas are times. Uh, actually, I should tell you what the bottom two indicators are. The bottom indicator is the 18-day average up-down volume, or uh, is that the? Yeah, it's the up-down volume. Advanced uh, is the 18 day average of the up down volume, and next window higher is the 18 day average of the advanced decline. So, when uh, when these two indicators are above minus 10, and that's when I shared in blue the market's in an uptrend. When these two indicators are below minus 10, the market's in the downtrend. So, over the last uh, Basically, year it shows the times of his uptrends and downtrends, and this is and both these indicators work pretty well defining divergence. In other words, when the S and P's is making lower lows and those two indicators are making higher lows, uh, if you look at the uh, bottom back in March, uh, you know the mark uh, GDX was falling down, made a lower low, and both those indicators made higher lows. That circled in red. And going into a top of uh, was about April, May there, uh, GDX was making higher highs, and both those indicators are making lower highs. So let's get over to where we are at the current time frame, which is basically starts in about September. The market, uh, I was pretty bullish in August, and the market still fell back. But both those indicators made uh, a circle in red, and I, I noticed uh, noted with the red arrows that the market was making, both indicators were making higher highs and higher lows as GDX was pr uh, pretty much working a little bit lower low. And that's in the past as a bullish divergence, but the market still went down. I think it's just kind of a shakeout type decline. But both indicators, as we're talking, I uh, made this earlier in the day, as long as they both above remain above minus 10, the uptrend's intact. And so far, there's no divergence. Actually, we're, if you look on the GDX chart, we're pretty much matching the previous highs 
Uh, we had in the uh, September period there up around that 30 range. And both indicators are still making higher highs and uh, on both those indicators. So that's a positive divergence. So even though we're re- retraced here minor, uh, minorly, uh, we, at the moment, I don't see any top. If both those indicators were actually falling back, approaching minus 10, I'd be a little bit more worried. But so far, that's not happening. So even on a short-term basis, we've got a minor consolidation, but this consolidation is probably, in my opinion, the halfway point of the next move up. The reason why I say that, we can flip to chart number six. All right. And so uh, the previous chart was a daily chart, and it kind of looks at the short-term moves. Uh, and the, this chart, it uh, looks at the bigger moves. It's a weekly chart, and this chart goes back to actually beginning of 2022 so it's uh one you know you're close to two years or whatever and um the bottom window is the uh, cumulative uh, weekly advanced decline and the next window up is the cumulative up down volume indicators and uh tried working on this for a while that there was something there i could never figure out why until i i put bollinger bands to it and uh, what seems to really work well, when both those indicators close above the mid Bollinger Band, it's a little bit late uh, on the buy and a little bit late on the sell, but it gets you in the main trend. That's why I was kind of looking for in the weekly time frames because I got shorter term indicators that work pretty well at getting you in the short term time, but you don't know if you're catching a big trend or not. It may be just a short term trend and the market may fall back again. Well, this catches the trend. So, you know, most of these times when the uh, signal is generated, they're usually generated anywhere from two to six months trends. And if you notice to, to the right here, we closed above the mid Bollinger Band on in both indicators last week. Now, the market went up for three weeks before that triggered that indicator. But since now we're above both uh, the Mid Bollinger bands to suggest at least we got two months to go here on this rally and possibly six months, which is basically next, um, what be, uh, we've been March, April time frame. Don't know how far that is out, but it's a multi, it's usually a multi month indicator. Uh, so we got something on a bigger time frame, at least so far, uh, uh, it's, it's signaled here. So how big is the rise? As long as those, both those indicators remain above their mid Bollinger bands, it could go on for a while. As a matter of fact, the last time they gave a sell was back in April of this year, and I, that's the last red line, and it hasn't turned bullish just until now. So April until October was that uh, six months. So it, it declined for six months, caught that six month decline, and now it may catch a you know a six month or I don't know at least two month advance. So. Um, on a short-term basis, you know, the chart, the previous chart looks bullish. On a mid-term basis, uh, the bigger trend looks bullish. So, how high is high? We'll have to wait and see. So, right. And I want to ask on. Oh, go sorry. Ahead, sorry. I want. Oh, go ahead, Tim. I'm sorry. Nope. I'm. I'm. I'm done. Go I, ahead. I was going to ask on chart five. I. I like this. Look at it. You know, the closer you approach this kind of ten line here, right? The obviously the more nervous you should get on a trend reversal. Is there, you know, obviously we're going to have a little dip right here based on this chart, right? How many consecutive days, I guess, of approaching this, this 10 line here would make you nervous? Is that, does that question make sense? Oh, the minus 10 line, you mean? Yes, yes. Or, all right, well, we're a long ways from it, I guess. Yeah. And normally, a lot of times that, that, not always, but a lot of times that, uh, yeah. so far, both markets, the up-down volume bands, client indicators are not uh, falling back. I mean, they're holding pretty steady at the recent high, so you're not seeing a, a pullback yet. So that tells me that we're probably, even though the market fell back here, GDX has fell back, right. both those indicators are not falling back, showing strength. But if they just start approach minus 10, chances are, if they're approaching minus 10, they're going to go through minus 10. Right that's on. not happening here. So um, I'm thinking you, know, you could actually buy here, and I think you'd be okay. Awesome. Tim, thank you so much for joining us, guys. That is Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. 
ord-oracle.com. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. All right, thank you for having me on. All right, have a great rest of your day, Tim. Bye now. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. He will be back tomorrow. Uh, we were just with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. That is Ord-Oracle.com. Go give him a visit and see what he has to offer. He is always uh, always a great time on this uh, show here. Take a look at Spotify right now. Um, they're coming back a little bit, which is positive for the company. So they had this big run-up. Essentially what happened uh, about this time and a little bit in the past as well is they had dumped a ton of money uh, into trying to make Spotify like the platform for podcasts, right? They spent billions of dollars on this, all right? I think they paid Joe Rogan almost a billion himself just to move everything uh, to their platform. And then they have a few other heavy hitters. Uh, we'll have to see um, in the long term if people start going to, you know, Spotify, right, for their podcast. I, I think the major issue here and what this will shake out to be looking at this, right, is going to be which platforms have the least amount of censorship, right? So YouTube is getting, uh, it's getting bad for a lot of podcasters, right? They have to not talk about something. Or if they do talk about things, uh, they risk becoming demonetized. But of course, as well, there are some other platforms such as Rumble that have come about uh, to try to kind of rectify that issue. Um, but they just don't get the amount of energy as things like Spotify and YouTube do. So 
If Spotify can kind of get that sweet spot where they're a little uh, less stringent on their censorship uh, and what you can and can't talk about, that might be in the clear. However, their financials were pretty decent. Um, the number of, and what's really big about this here, you know, you can talk about operating income and uh, focusing on efficiencies, which is a major issue for Spotify, but of course they dumped a ton of money into the company. They got rid of about 6% of their staffing. Their gross margin rose 26%, which is pretty solid from July to September. But then the company's number of monthly active users rose 26% to 574 million. Excuse me. <laughs> and that's really, I think, the big driver for these companies that rely on basically ad revenue. Folks, thank you so much for joining me today. Tom will be back tomorrow. I'll be with you um, just for the short news segment after this. Have a great rest of your day, folks, and we will see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. for Tommy O'Brien's show, The Morning Market Kickoff. Take care now.